Okay, here's a gas stoichiometry problem, which is essentially just mixing stoichiometry with gas laws. So there's really not much else to it. So in this situation we're looking at, we have 30 grams of butane, and we're trying to figure out how much oxygen gas at standard temperature and pressure will be needed to react with it. So it's slightly different in the approach, but it's the same idea. We're going to go from butane to oxygen. So we're going to start off by figuring out how to get from one substance to the other. So to start with, we have 30 grams of butane. So this is our butane here. So 30 grams of C4H10. And to figure out what about oxygen, we know we can connect moles to moles. That's what these numbers here, every two moles will make 13. So we can start by just converting two moles of oxygen. So first we need the molar mass of butane, which is 58.14 grams. So there's that many grams of C4H10 in one mole. And then the connection between butane and oxygen is 2 to 13. So for every 2 moles of butane, we get 13 moles of oxygen. And so at this point, we can take a break here and calculate how many moles of oxygen gas that would be. So 30 divided by 58.14, and then times 13 over 2, I get 3. 3.5 moles of oxygen. And so now I want to figure out, okay, how much space does that take up? So I know it's at standard temperature and pressure. So my pressure is one atmosphere, and standard temperature, remember, is zero Celsius or 273 Kelvin, which is what we're going to need in this problem. And again, we know the moles is 3.35 moles. So we're looking for volume. So we use the ideal gas law in this case if we want, PV equals nRT, and then we'll go and solve for V, and we'll plug everything in. I'm not going to go through this whole thing. Go check the gas law problems if you want. But when we do that, we should get an answer of about 75.1 liters, and that is the volume of gas at STP. Now, a shortcut you might know as well is that a mole of any gas at STP any gas will be about 22.4 liters per mole. So if you have 3.35 moles, you can really just multiply it by this number to get the same answer, which again seems reasonable based on this. So this is how you do a gas stoichiometry problem, but let's just do one more. All right, so here we have an explosive, um, penta area, I'm not even gonna try it, but anyway, we have this explosive, and we're, it's 10 grams, and when it explodes, it produces all these gases. And that pressure from the gas is what makes this explosion work. So we have a container with a volume of 0.5 liters. We know the temperature is going to be about 1,000 Kelvin. And we want to find the pressure inside. So from the ideal gas law, we know in order to find the pressure, we have to first find the moles. How many moles of gas are going to be present? So what we're going to do is say, okay, we have 10 grams of this explosive, which I'm just going to abbreviate PETN. And I've given the molar mass here, so we can quickly figure out how many moles of the explosive there are off the bat. So 10 divided by that number, 316.17. And I get that there were 0 0.0316 moles of the PETN. Then we get a look at the stoichiometry here. So for every one mole of this, how many moles of gas are produced? Well, all these products are gases. There's two moles of CO, four moles of H2O, three of CO2, and two of N2. So we really want the total. So the idea is for every one mole of PETN, if we add these all up, we get a total of 11 moles of gas. So we're going to essentially multiply by 11. And when I do that, I get 0.348 moles of gas. So I just want to know what is the pressure then of 0.348 moles of gas under these conditions. So I will go to my ideal gas law. So PV equals nRT. And again, we're going to solve for P. So P equals nRT over V. And we'll just plug in all our numbers. So 0.348 moles. And the ideal gas constant, 0 0.0821 atmosphere liters over mole Kelvin. I know I'm not writing that very well here. 1,000 Kelvin and divide by our volume of 0.5 liters, and we'll get our final answer of 57 point, we'll say one, and because we use the constant with atmospheres, 
we're going to get this in units of atmospheres. So the pressure, if this container could hold it, which 57 atmospheres is quite a pressure, probably couldn't, and that's why we break apart, but that would be it. So this is how you do gas law stoichiometry. There's, you know, probably 20, 30, there's so many different ways you could do this. I can't show you them all, but the general principle here is going from moles of one chemical to moles of another, and then probably using the ideal gas law in some way, shape, or form. And that's it. So until next time, I am Derek Genova. Have a delightful day.